Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live 10 at 10. Area schools were on alert after the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension passed on word of a potential threat. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Agents with the Minnesota BCA alerted area law enforcement that schools in northwestern Minnesota may be targeted. Now, the threat prompted several schools to go into lockdown, including Detroit Lakes, Perham, and New York Mills. Students were left wondering what was going on, and many parents opted to take their children out of school early. Valley News Team's Natalie Parsons was in Detroit Lakes and explains why it's better to be safe than sorry. The sun is setting on a day ending safe and sound. But earlier, parents were notified the Detroit Lake School District issued a code yellow. They had received a, a threat and they were following protocol to make sure all students and staff were safe. Whether it was a voicemail, text message or email, the district said they were on lockdown. Classes and school operations were continuing to go on inside, but anyone looking to enter must be authorized at the door. School districts are put in a position anytime they hear anything um, threatening uh, a student or teachers or staff, um, they need to follow protocol. Other parents had their concerns with this threat being that the notice sent was vague in saying northwestern Minnesota. And in doing their own research, they found that other local public schools were not on lockdown. We're going to worry about the information that we have in Detroit Lakes. And uh, we just felt like because of the, the ambiguity of it all, um, that we would, we would take action. The Detroit Lakes superintendent says law enforcement did not give them specifics on this threat. And now the question of what tomorrow will bring is on the minds of many in this community. We'll be in touch with law enforcement tonight. Um, to make sure has there been any progress made on, on identifying or is there any closure on this um, and then make decisions about are we going to enact code yellow uh, tomorrow morning. In Detroit Lakes, Natalie Parsons, Valley News Live. And if you live within the Detroit Lakes School District and want to be signed up for notification system, you can find that information on our website at valleynewslive.com. The Grand Forks Alaris Center manager, Cheryl Swanson, has been fired, according to Alaris Commission member Hal Gershman. Alaris Center employees say they were not happy with their managers and filed complaints. An independent law firm investigated complaints of a hostile work environment and a very high turnover rate among employees. The Alaris Center assistant manager, pictured on the right, Bob LeBaron, was fired earlier this week. The fate of transportation director Dale Bergman's job also hangs in limbo. This after the city received complaints about his job performance. An arrest warrant has been issued for the man accused of breaking into more than a dozen businesses, stealing items and pawning them. David William Anderson has been charged in Cass County Court for dealing in stolen property. Anderson is accused of burglarizing 17 area businesses. Court documents show the crimes may span over three years. Emotions were running high again in Bismarck this afternoon as Dakota Access Pipeline protesters took to the streets and were met by police and some people with opposing views. The pipeline protesters were more than 100 strong, but the smaller group of people who were counter-protesting were loud as well. The pipeline protesters marched outside the Bank of North Dakota before they were met by citizens who are against the protest, and that started a shouting match between the groups. Today is the second day in a row that anti-pipeline demonstrators have come face to face with citizens against the continued demonstrations. Police kept the two groups separate so the situation didn't escalate. It was incredibly peaceful. We always are peaceful. We're always here in prayer. Um, the only peace that, that wasn't here was uh, uh, by folks who were uh, shouting slurs at us um, and threatening us. According to police, 400, rather, four people were arrested at today's protest for entering the bank and refusing to leave. A now-deleted Craigslist posting sent to us by a viewer advertised that people will get paid to protest the Dakota Access Pipeline. The person behind the post says they've quit their job and cashed in their 401k. The post also says that you can get $1,000 if you quit your job and join them full-time protesting. They want to organize people for a Friday night protest at the West Acres Mall. Officials there say the mall is private property and they're not going to allow it. A number of Fargo police officers are heading to Morton County again. A source tells Valley News Live that more law enforcement from the city are traveling there to assist as protests over the Dakota Access Pipeline are expected to continue. 
With winter on the way, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says it will provide a winter camp near the town of Cannonball in an effort to keep all involved safe. This after the company that's building the pipeline is suing the Corps over its decision to put work near Lake Oahe on hold, arguing the construction's already been approved. If you're flying out of Fargo, you're advised to get there a couple of hours prior to your flight to make sure you have enough time to get through security. The TSA is experiencing issues with its carry-on screening equipment, and as a result, there are longer wait times. The TSA is asking you to consider checking your bag rather than waiting at the security checkpoint. The airport authority there, it may be some, there may be some congestion at times when numerous flights are set to depart around the same time. No word on when the issue will be fixed. The holidays are a time to be thankful for what you have and remember those who are less fortunate. Children at the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Moorhead made what they call blessing bags to give to homeless people. Valley News Team's Yovana Simuj tells us how the bags are teaching children a valuable lesson. Children at the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd are helping the homeless one bag at a time. There are hundreds of people who are homeless in the Fargo-Moorhead area and we want to do something um, to help them out. Hats, hand warmers and snacks were stuffed into blessing bags. Lots of items that hopefully they can use, especially as the, the weather turns colder. The project gives kids a chance to learn about the homeless problem, all while spreading kindness to those less fortunate. We should all deserve to be treated fairly. Each family from the church gets a bag to keep in their car and hand out to anyone they believe needs it. It's a good thing and it helps out a lot of people who don't, who are less fortunate. Let them know that, that we're caring for them and we're thinking of them. Make them have a little bit more fun or be healthier. And a great way to spread holiday cheer. This is a tangible way that they can um, to see the needs and to, to reach out and especially at Thanksgiving and around the holidays it's important for us to remember that we are blessed and we could be a blessing for others. Because that is what the holidays are all about. In Moorhead, Yovana Simich, Valley News Live. The church is hoping to hand out 400 bags. If you're interested in making a donation, the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd is always taking donations.